basically all the suspension on it. It's pretty much shot. Now out of all the cars in my stable here, the Mustang is the one that I've been neglecting the most. And basically I've been ordering the parts that I need to get this thing drift ready. Today's original video was supposed to be installing my custom spec BC coilovers. But as I started researching how to drift these Mustangs, I realized I needed an adjustable pan hard bar. So with that, I ordered a pan hard brace and it's yet to get here. Once that gets in here, we're gonna tackle all the suspension settings, all the custom specs on the coilovers so you guys know exactly what I'm doing and I'll source where I got all of my information. So we're not doing that today. So that leaves the question, what are we doing? Now, since I am a hot boy at heart, I like my cars to look good. So what did I do? I spent a bunch of money on parts to make the Mustang look good, starting with an MMD rear spoiler. A stock Mustang decklet spoiler has never been my favorite, and that's because I don't like this like two post wing style on any car. And that's why I put that Hellcat spoiler on my Challenger, because it's kind of like a duck bill, a big one. And the MMD spoiler is exactly that. All right, all in all, way too easy to install. Four nuts, and then you put in two screws, double adhesive tape with some uh, adhesion promoter. Man, I'm stumbling all over my words, man. But yeah, way too easy. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is something that I've been neglecting like for way too long, and that's putting in the passenger seat. Now I left it in the garage. My son loves playing in it when I'm in here tinkering around, but it's also kind of getting in the way. So now it's time to put it into the Mustang and kind of wrap up that whole interior segment, just like the driver's seat, just like I did on the Challenger as well, planted technology seat brackets. Uh, that's what I've used in the past. Now that's what I'm using in the Mustang. So I got the passenger side new in a box. So let's go ahead and throw this uh, passenger seat in. Guys, yeah, so I was getting some B-roll of the status seats. Feels good to have both seats in there. You might notice that the material is pulling off, pulling off and away from the D-ring. I don't think that's like a crappy product thing. It's that I broke the D-rings, adjusting the fabric. I cleaned everything up because you can take the inserts out and throw them in the washer. And basically I broke the D-rings. But as I'm filming this and thinking like, man, people are gonna think these things are just crap. Um, I contacted status and they actually sent me the new D-rings. And right as I'm thinking about this, they arrive in the mail. So I got four D-rings for both seats. Uh, I'm not gonna do that right now. I'll do that probably another day. I don't wanna bore you guys too much, but I do have some GT California special side scoops. So if you're like a big Mustang guy, I've always liked the side scoops. Now, I was gonna install this because I like the way it looks, right? But these are white and I thought maybe I could get away with murder and they would look okay because the wheels are white. These are white, but it just, it's looking wild, guys. It's looking, I can't do it. I can't pull the trigger on hard installing these because of the color. It just, this car's looking like a clown car. Um, but I guess they say if your drift car is in like three different colors, it's not really a drift car. Um, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get these wrapped, or I'm gonna get them painted to match this gray. More than likely, just wrapped. I don't wanna spend too much time on these. I'm gonna go ahead and clean them up. They're just installed with two tree firs and some double-sided tape, which means you gotta drill two little holes into the side of your car. So again, because they are just so jarring to the eyes, uh, I'm not gonna install them. So um, let me know what you think, and uh, let me know if I should install them anyway. So let me get you some B-roll. All right, so I just spent the last couple of hours undoing a rat's nest of wiring that these old fog lights had in them, but I changed them from so, for some seven inch Jeep headlights I found on Amazon. They look freaking sweet, um, but I had to really clean up the wiring and figure out how to wire these things the way I wanted them because basically I wanted them to glow orange. Let me show them to you. All right, guys, those are those off-road lights I was just talking about. I think it looks freaking sick. Let me turn them on so you can see and get the full look. I mean, I think it just looks tough as hell. So I did, I did keep all the plastics and everything. 
I got rid of the Eleanor grill because the lights actually fit better in this grill. And now that I see it like this, it looks, I'm just completely in love with this look. Let me turn them on. All right, bam, look at that. It looks, it looks, I mean, I think it looks freaking sweet. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you want to do this, I'll put a link uh, to the lights down below. I didn't video how to wire them because I was pretty much trying to figure it out. But these are actually for the switchback turn signals. I just hardwired them so they would just stay orange the whole time. Now, probably wondering where I got the idea from. Now, I had originally put these lights in the Challenger. I'll put a pick right here. Um, but then I decided to sell it, so I didn't follow through with that idea. But looking at a Hellcat where they've got the inside lights that are orange and the outside lights are the headlights, I thought that would be pretty cool to do with the Mustang in some sense, just the orange, the amber light on the ends and then the uh, regular headlights uh, towards the outside. Now, I will say that if you do wire these for the actual lights, you're gonna blind everybody because they are freaking bright. Uh, I don't have a video or a clip of any of that, but I was wiring them that way. And I quickly realized like if I wire these and turn these fog lights on, I'm probably gonna piss a lot of people off. All right, guys, check it out. Something I want to touch base on. Um, you know I originally got to the car because the carpet was absolutely rancid. I finally figured out what it was that makes the rainwater go inside the car. It's basically where the windshield um, wiper cowl is. There is a drain and the drain gets clogged. I'm pretty sure that it's clogged because there's still twigs and leaves and all sorts of stuff underneath the trunk lid where my uh, windows are on the doors. So I'm pretty much gonna remove that cowl and empty that out. But something else I wanted to talk about was this. If you follow what I did and you got the interior, I originally removed the sun visors, but when you drive the car, trust me, you need them. So I went ahead and put those back in. I did keep the center dome light and of course the rear view mirror. Other than that, it keeps the car pretty simple to drive. Uh, for the most part, it's like a street car with just a gutted interior. Not sure if I touch base on this. This is basically a platform that elevates your feet. That way, if you do remove the carpet, your feet stay relatively in the same position that they were when the carpet was there because it does take away about an inch uh, when you remove the carpet and then your feet positioning is kind of weird. Yes, I'm gonna tackle those hanging wires here pretty soon. Pretty much gonna wrap up what I'm doing to the Mustang today because next weekend we're gonna tackle all the suspension. That way we're gonna be ready for our next track day. And I just remembered, I did pick up a second set of brake calipers from a junkyard. They were 37 bucks, they're a Ford part. So basically I'm just gonna refurbish them a little bit, hit them with some paint, put some new um, uh, brake pads and lube up the calipers. I got some Permatex brake parts lubricant for extreme heat. This is gonna definitely play a big part in the drift car because we wanna resist as much heat as possible. So I do have to do that. I do have the dual caliper brackets. I got all the lines. Um, but basically next weekend, we are gonna tackle all the suspension and then we're gonna do a little bit of testing. Nothing too crazy, but we wanna make sure everything's buttoned up and feeling right. All right, I'm gonna end this video with one more thing. As car guys, we all love rare parts. And I got freaking lucky because a buddy of mine had these Daytona Super B tail lights for a Challenger laying around. And he said, hey, I know you've always wanted these. I changed the back end of my Challenger to a Hellcat. So I'm gonna go ahead and give these to you. So I was like, dude, bet. Like even though the car's for sale, anytime I'm gonna hit a lick like that and get some rare parts, I'm gonna take it. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up today's vlog. Actually, seeing the Challenger with those taillight covers that I've always wanted makes me fall in love with the car again. <laughs> so I'm actually pretty happy about that. You guys have no idea. When I bought the car in 2015, they had already discontinued those taillight covers, and I was bummed. So getting them in this great shape and putting them right on the car and seeing kind of my vision come to life, it's fulfilling. I'm really happy with that car. And as you guys saw, the Mustang made tons of progress today. Uh, it's all small stuff, but it's all things that need to be done. Next thing I'll do off camera, because it's not that important, is go ahead and fix that drain so my passenger floorboard doesn't continue to get wet because the computer is actually sitting right there in the passenger footwell. So it's actually, it's not safe for it to be like that. You could ruin the computer. Uh, it's a common problem. S197 forums, they, they know all about it. So next thing is next week, we're gonna deep dive into the 
suspension setup, the coilovers, the pan hard bar, pan hard brace. We're gonna install all that stuff and some rack spacers from Make It Modular. And we're gonna go over all of the settings, entry level settings. Now I've got these settings from people like Matt Sopa, Chelsea Denofa, the information is all out there, but I'm taking all that information and combining it and putting it into one video. Same thing with the BC coilovers. They're a custom spec coilover specifically for the Mustang and specifically for drifting. I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys that so you know exactly what I'm doing so you're not out there buying what you don't need and then having to spend the money twice. That's exactly what we don't want. I've done tons of research, which is also why this is taking a lot longer than usual because I wanna make sure I buy the right thing so the car can do what I want us to do and I don't have a lot of issues. A lot of times people say, don't overbuild your drift car, don't spend all this money, you wanna test it and tune it. Now, unofficially, I've tested the car. It rides like crap, like really bad. I wish I would've videoed it to show you guys, tons of body roll, but this car does have 200,000 miles. So basically all the suspension on it, it's pretty much shot. So all the stuff needs to be replaced anyway. So instead of buying the OE stuff and then turning around and buying the aftermarket stuff, we're just doing everything from the get go. And when I say everything, I say that loosely because I'm trying to make this a budget build. Uh, the video after that, um, Mustang wise, I will be breaking down the entire budget of the Mustang. And the drift Stang, car included, is under $10,000. Yep, built the drift car under 10 grand. Now, I did reuse a lot of stuff from the Challenger build, um, but that's stuff you don't necessarily need. It was just stuff that I wanted to, uh, to use because it made me feel better and more comfortable as a driver. But yeah, that's me in the next video. Let me know what you want to know in the next video on suspension setup, BC coilovers, all that good stuff. And then let me know what you want to know in the price breakdown video. I will be working hard and diligently on that stuff because I want to help you guys get to the track because it's taken me quite a long time to commit to this. But now that I'm committed, I realize that it's not really that crazy. In fact, the Challenger build was even crazier than this Mustang build. That's gonna wrap it up, guys. I'm gonna go help my dad uh, on the Ram Charger. I saw he has the garage opened, which means the shop is open at Casa Dad. And uh, yeah, so next time, guys, peace out. Make sure you hit that like button. It really helps me out in the algorithm. Leave a comment below, please let me know, and hit that subscribe button. So next time, guys, peace out.